the only funding we have comes from Indiana University. All right, fantastic. You got that out of the way. <laughs> so sure. sum up the findings and tell me who was competing against whom and over how long. So let me just give you I, basically three findings. The first is that we, we compare robot analysts to traditional Wall Street human analysts. And we find that the robot analysts tend to be more, uh, less optimistic, more balanced. They revise their recommendations more often, so they're less stale. And then the finding that, that you talked about is we find that the buys from the robot analysts in our portfolio trading strategy outperform the human analysts by about 4% annualized. So, Professor Merkley, you have a couple examples here of, uh, of exactly the situations you just described. Uh, one is Liberty Global uh, at the beginning of April 2018, when 76% of human analysts said it was a buy. 100% of uh, the firms that you looked at, two in this case of the seven, said sell. And then, sure enough, Liberty was down 10% over the next six months. Also, Mattel, this was a December of 2016. Uh, most of the humans said buy, most of the humans said hold, and Mattel went on to sink 28% in six months. A uh, Kind of a similar story with Halliburton as well. So I guess the question we have is, what do you mean by robots here? Uh, it sounds like this is a lot of big data analytics where they're combing through footnotes and, the, and such. Is that right? So you have different uh, approaches depending on the specific company, but they're all what I would call computer-assisted uh, programs where you have a human perhaps doing quality control, but the, the computers are doing all of the stock picking. Okay. How many robo firms in total did you look at and how, versus how many human-based analyst firms? That's one question. And was sure. the robo firm count large enough to be, in your view, and I assume it would be, statistically significant? So the, the robot firms, we don't have as many, right? So in our sample, we have about seven different robot firms that enter. And we have all of the major Wall Street uh, banks and analysts. So, it, you know, it's 50 to 100 or more, depending on the time period. Um, the, the downside is the robots. We do have fewer observations, which it can make it harder, actually, for them to, uh, to find significant results. And are, are robots more balanced and less optimistic because they don't have to explain to humans why they're pessimists and why they and they don't have to explain to sales staffs why they are down on a particular stock? So, so I completely agree with that. They don't have investment banking. They don't have brokerage yes. concerns. They don't have to have access to management, so they don't have to worry about, you know, uh, upsetting company management. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then they're also human. Um, humans, uh, research studies suggest that humans tend to be more optimistic on average. Damn those humans. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And, and, and humans make errors, um, even if they're random errors, and the robots simply follow their programs Exactly. So a couple of the firms uh, of the seven that are included here are new constructs. We've had David Trainer on uh, as a guest. The Street.com, actually, which uh, Jim Cramer's been associated with. Rapid Ratings, I think my uncle works there. Uh, Validia, <laughs> Value Engine, uh, which we're familiar with as well. Um, bottom line, though, when, when I look through the methodologies, and, and again, I, just going back to the point about footnotes, I wonder if financial reporting has become so uh, overwrought through regulation, through the complexity of these companies, what have you, that it's almost impossible for any human who tracks certainly more than one company to really take in all of that data. Am I, you know, am I being too condescending towards humans, or is there is there a potential problem here that maybe slimmed down reporting or, or something like that could fix? No, not at all. I mean, reporting has become increasingly complex, and that's where the robots sort of have their advantage. You know, in the study, we find that they are more likely to revise in connection with complex disclosures. So if I dump a 500-page 10K on your desk, right, you're going to have a hard time parsing through that, whereas a computer can do it very quickly. All right. Professor, the few, the proud, the robots. <laughs> Professor Ken Merkley, we thank you.